greeting to all in today's session the content is about intermediate chemistry which will be very much helpful for your international entrance and the competitive examination india level jee advanced jee mains uh, this is for nit and iit entrance examination that is a technical domain um, what need chemistry for medical entrance examination telangana and andhra pradesh entrance examination that is again engineering entrance for the technical domain so in addition to all this if you are aspiring for government examination where general studies in turn general science question content question uh, concepts will be there the topic what we are discussing will be very much fetching for that kind of examination let's discuss about the question number 1 question number 1 is collected for iupac nomenclature explain the geometrical isomerism of the following compound as per the iupac protocol is it nomenclature to be applied geometrical isomerism stand for the orientation of functional groups around the carbon carbon double bond where re rotation is restricted we are not supposed to move the bonds so double bond is very uh, rigid in nature so that uh, flipping of double bond may not be possible right so that is it nomenclature is applicable whenever carbon carbon double bond is accompanied by four different functional groups right so in order to uh, give the numbering so first of all we have to uh, consider the carbon number one around the carbon number one according to the cip rule one higher the atomic number higher will be the priority here bromo is there one side carbon is there one side obviously bromo atomic number is larger so that higher priority will be accorded later on carbon with the atomic uh, sorry priority number 2 and move on to second carbon here we have a carbon again and a carbon again so double bond is linked up with the two carbon atoms only at that condition we have to move somewhat forward whenever you are moving forward this side you have oxygen this side you have triple bond then there is a ambiguity in order to assign how can we go for numbering whether we have to give number 1 for this carbon or this carbon that is clearly explained by immediate higher priority so here being the carbon is of triple bond so that you can you can consider triple bond as three bonded carbon atoms so that this double bonded carbon is linked up with the three singly bonded carbon atoms but this carbon atom is linked up with oxygen if you consider carbon and oxygen obviously you have to move towards oxygen rather than carbon though we have three carbons but oxygen atomic number is larger that's why number 1 is assigned for oxygen only so this is a kind of confusing parameter where most of the people assume triple bond obviously higher priority so that we will put over there that is not correct this is clearly because of atomic number of oxygen over carbon so that move on to higher priority for oxygen so here you can put one and triple bonded carbon will be given with the two so after after assigning higher priority and lower priority you have to check two similar uh, priority are on the same side or on the opposite plane okay if you observe this double bond two higher priority are inclined in two opposite directions so that we can say it is the e configuration e for entagonal where two higher priority groups are in opposite dimensions right so that e after mentioning e how can we name this so bromo is located so highest longest chain is highest priority so that let me go with 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this is the way highest chain longest chain will be taken so on the second carbon bromo is there on the third carbon propyne is there three carbon length and uh, second carbon is having double bond so that we in mention and being it is the compound of ether so r o r is called ether for ether compounds the iupac nomenclature will be eth alkoxy alkane e alkoxy alkane will be given for ethers right so that uh, shortest chain will be methoxy over here so that methoxy is given after methoxy the leftover will be 1 2 3 4 4 carbon length so that methoxy butane will be given this is the way we have to go for assigning name methoxy butane 
So here, bromo propyl E, methoxy butane, and the inclination is one one opposite, so that E will be given. So this is the kind of uh, is the nomenclature given for this kind of organic compound as per the IUPAC protocol. Move on to. Move on to question number two, Cambridge Assessment International Education. From this source, the question was collected. Which information is needed to calculate the relative atomic masses of the element? Atomic mass, if, you are there, if they are asking, just we can simply put option A is the correct answer. Atomic mass denotes the total number of protons and the neutrons in the most abundant isotope here. For one element, so many isotopes are available. Carbon, for carbon uh, in the reference, carbon is present as a carbon 12 isotope, carbon 14 isotope, carbon 13 isotope as well. So this in that case, so most abundant isotope is C12. Carbon 12 is the most abundant one. In that, how many protons are there? How many neutrons are there? So that is the case. You can go for proton count plus neutron count called atomic mass. But the question they are asking for, calculate relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass is simply average atomic mass. In case of average atomic mass, total number of total number of protons plus neutrons are taken into the consideration by total number of isotopes also taken. Okay. So here, for example, carbon is having C12 isotope, C13 isotope, C14 isotope as well. In that case, how many protons are there in C12, C13, C14? Entire one can be taken. And how many neutrons are there in C12, C13, C14? That also taken. By total number of isotopes. Here isotopes, we are considering three, right? So the three can be taken. This is the way relative atomic mass can be calculated. In order to explain... So, how to calculate relative atomic mass? The weight average of masses of elements isotopes in comparison to the mass of carbon-12 is known as relative atomic mass. So, we are comparing with the reference compound carbon-12. So, average masses of the isotopes are taken individually that can be compared with the carbon-12 isotope. So, that, that is called a relative. So, in comparison, you are going to calculate their atomic masses, which is given in the option number B. A nuclear number and a total number of isotopes are taken into the consideration. For question, uh, question number 3 is collected from JE Advanced 2019 question paper, paper 1 question it will be. This is the question came from Organic Chemistry, Scheme 1, 2 and 3. Three schemes are provided. Among three schemes, scheme 1 and 2 describes the conversion of P2Q and R2S. P2Q conversion is there, R2S conversion is there. In scheme 3, describe synthesis of T. How synthesis of T is possible uh, starting from S and starting from Q. The total number of bromine atoms present in the molecule T. So, this is the final product. T is the final product. In that final product, T, how many bromine atoms are there? So, question is very simple. Number of bromines count. If you know numbers 1, 2, 3, it is possible to count 1, 2, 3 like that. But the thing is, if you go for these many series of reactions, then only you can count 1, 2, 3. Then only you can find how many bromines are there on this final product. In order to get that, we have to go for a series of reactions. Here, the importance of reagent plays a vital role over there. We will see what kind of transformations we can notice in scheme 1, scheme 2 and scheme 10, scheme 3 eventually. Right? In order to get that, when the same question is uh, given in the Hindi version as well. <coughs> Yojanae 1 or 2, scheme 1 and 2. Ramansh, P se Q tak tatha R se S tak ka rupantaran darshite hai. Yojana 3 me T ka translation Q aur S se darshaya gaya hai. T ke ek anu me bromine paramanu on ki kul sankhya hai. So bromine paramanu on ka kul sankhya nikalna hai. Yojana 1, 
uh, aniline is taken as the p and q to be determined yojana 2 r is benzene and s to be identified yojana 3 s can be taken and t can be identified so here the answer is how many bromines are uh, present in the final product t four bromines are present how can we get this answer so in order to get the answer we have to consider entire scheme wise representation started with the aniline aniline is considered as a starting material p whenever aniline subjected to bromination under water condition uh, here the hint is given excessive quantity b an amine is highly reactive ring activating group it is it used to give it is it used to boost up the ring system towards the electrophilic substitution being it is electron donating species it will reach in uh, it will uh, increase the electron density around the benzene ring at the ortho and para positions and the bromine taken in excessive quantity we will get tribromo aniline as the product after tribromo aniline formation any then diazotization carried in order to diazotize here sodium nitrite hydrochloric acid 273 kelvin extremely low at temperature 0 degree centigrade or 273 kelvin is maintained by the addition of sodium nitrate and hydrochloric acid that used to convert amine into diazonium salt which is called benzene diazonium chloride the benzene diazonium chloride will be treated with copper nitrile and potassium cyanide uh, whenever these are the reagents here a simple reaction carried where entire diazonium salt will be displaced with the nitrile so that uh, we will get a um, tribromo cyanobenzene this is called 2 4 6 tribromo cyanobenzene whenever the cyanobenzene is formed further you are going to treat with water water will convert cn into coh this is a conversion this is the hydrolysis of nitrile into carboxylic acid wherever nitrile is there uh, upon hydrolysis that transformed into carboxylic acid it, it is the fundamental fine after the hydrolysis we are going to treat with the thionyl chloride thionyl chloride is the a uh, halogenating agent so that acid converted into acid chloride derivative this is called a uh, benzoyl chloride tribromo benzyl chloride this will be the product q so in scheme one uh, so many reactions are mentioned each and every reaction is individual after getting that reaction you have to move on to second don't uh, mix up all the reactions together all the uh, all the reagents will fight themselves that's the reason why one by one we have to treat one by one product formation we need to achieve so that q will be uh, q will be the product of scheme one what you are doing first aniline treated with bromine tribromo aniline further diazotization benzene diazonium chloride treating with nitrile so that nh2 replaced with the cn later on hydrolysis cn to coh COOH further thionyl chloride further thionyl chloride COCl will be generated uh, all the individual steps are very clear simple but most logical in nature later on who want to scheme to in scheme to we need to start with the benzene benzene is regarded as r right so this is given in the question which can be treated with oleum oleum is a sulfur containing compound sulfonating agent whenever oleum is added on benzene so that we will get ben uh, benzene sulfonic acid this is the uh, reaction called the sulfonation it is the electrophilic substitution with the oleum oleum is a sulfonating agent uh, which is uh, enriched with the sulfur content and it gives rise to the is for two as the electrophile which can be further added over the uh, uh, at so3 is the electrophile which is further added with hydrogen so the benzene sulfonic acid will be formed benzene sulfonic acid uh, is treated with sodium hydroxide under heating condition whenever heated what happens sulfonyl uh, sulfonic acid moiety is replaced with the oh oh is called water hydroxy so that the compound formed is called phenol 
Phenol, when treated with bromine in the presence of carbon disulfide, up to two seventy three Kelvin. Actually, uh, OH is the ortho para directing group, but we are maintaining extremely low temperatures. Zero degree centigrade conditions are applied, and uh, it is the kind of uh, controlled bromination so that. Only monobromo product you can achieve. Monobromo product. By contrast, we get this monobromo at 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 the position rather than para we are getting because oxygen is having two lone pair of electrons. Sulfur is also uh, sorry. Bromine is also having three lone pair three lone pair of electrons and being bromo is bulkier in nature. Both the factors. One is bulkiness. Second is more the lone pair of electrons. They will fight each other so that uh, in order to make uh, Convenience of occupation so that all the bulky groups are far apart. Para is more preferable over ortho. Ortho is also possible under normal condition, but here, uh, extremely lower temperature. We will we will prefer for para bromo phenol as the product that will be S. After getting that one, move on to scheme three. In the scheme three, the starting material is para bromo phenol. Para bromo phenol is treated with sodium hydroxide. Whenever para bromo phenol is treated with sodium hydroxide, phenol is a mild organic acid. So why um, OH is called acid? Why phenol is called acid means after removing H plus, whatever phenoxide conjugate base formed is called the phenoxide, right? The phenoxide is highly resonance stabilized. That's the reason why phenol is said to be a mild organic acid. So acid will be obviously reacted with base to remove the proton, and we will get phenoxide. A phenoxide can be treated with a compound, a final compound of Q. Final compound of this scheme one. Scheme one final compound is what uh, this acid chloride will be generated as Q. You now that we can react over there. That acid chloride is treated. Whenever acid chloride react with this phenoxide, there is a formation of a ester compound. We need to remove chloride, and this O minus will be added over carbonyl carbon, and that is turned into a ester. Okay, a long chain, a uh, long chain combined compound will be generated. That is called a T. Where ester will be generated. This is the way we got. The question is. After getting this T product, how many bromo are there in the final T product? Let me go for counting one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Four bromo are present on the compound which is obtained in the scheme number three, right? So that four they answered over here. So four is the answer. So counting number of bromines is very small, but achieving these many reactions are very complicated. That's the reason why. Reagent chemistry plays a vital role in organic stream. If you are aware about the role of uh, reagent under specific conditions, then only we can achieve a suitable product and whatever answer we can exactly get it. Right? For question number three, four is the correct answer. Move on to question number four. Question number four is also collected from J. E. Advance. 2019 question paper paper one question it will be right. It is purely of inorganic chemistry and these are the compounds of boron, nitrogen, uh, sulfur. So these many compounds are given among B2 H6, B3, N3, H6, N2O, N2O4, H2 S2O3, H2 S2O8. The total number of molecules containing covalent bond between two atoms of the same kind here 1 2 3 4 5 6 six molecules are known to you among these six molecules how many molecules are having bond between the same atoms if nitrogen is there and either nitrogen to be bonded that is the way two similar atoms are in bonding condition how many molecules are there we need to anticipate here hindi version question is there b2 h6 b3 n3 h6 n2o n2o4 h2 s2 o3 or h2 s2 o8 may say jin anuon may do saman paramanuon ke beech saha samyojak covalent aband hai unki kul sankhya hai 
how many molecules are having the bonding between the two similar atoms the number of molecules are four out of six four are having four are having their uh, similar bonding atoms okay for that purpose in order to answer this one well, so there there must be a clear uh, vision about how the molecular geometry for these molecules will be how the atoms are arranged in these molecules so b2h6 is called what diborane if you observe the diborane diborane is the bridge head compound so uh, two boron atoms are surrounded with the terminal hydrogens and the two bridge head hydrogens are present can you find any bonding between boron and boron so that we can cancel it we don't have they are saying right move on to compound 2 b3 in 3h6 b3 in 3h6 is called what the borazine borazine is resembling with the benzene molecule how benzene is planar in the same way b3 in 3h6 is also the planar molecule which is called borazol which is called borazine as well if you observe this molecule can you find a boron boron bond or is nitrogen nitrogen bond anywhere we can't find boron nitrogen are alternatively arranged so that we don't have they are saying so we can cancel out these two and uh, except these two remaining all are possessing same atom bonding if you see n2o dinitrogen monoxide n2o is called a dinitrogen monoxide so nitrogen nitrogen bonding is there you can clearly see triple bonded so that it is having same atom bonding if you go for n2o4 into O4 molecule dinitrogen tetroxide we can say where you can find the same atom bonding over there nitrogen nitrogen bonding so that you can put a tick mark we all have they are saying and then either is H2SO2O3 H2SO2O3 molecule is having a kind of sulfur sulfur double bond right so that same atom bonding is found so you can put a tick mark over there H2S2O8 is the peroxy compound. This is exceptional peroxy compound for sulfur. Sulfur oxy acids are having um, a kind of peroxy linkage in two compounds. Among those two, H2S2O8 is one of the compound. Okay, where you can find the same atom bonding. Oxygen oxygen bonding is there. So that you can put tick mark for N2O, N2O4, uh, S2H2O3. And this is a molecule H2S2O8, right? These many are exhibiting same atom bonding. The answer is 4. For question number 4, answer is also 4, right? Move on to question number 5. This question is collected from Telangana Kurukulam Degree College Entrance Examination. The product formed in the following photochemical reaction. It is a part of organic in specific photochemical, uh, photochemistry concept. We are taking a bicyclic compound. This is the quininoid molecule. We can say quininoid. There are two types of molecules, uh, uh, two types of uh, transformations you can notice for phenols. Phenol exhibit, exhibit a benzonoid structure and quininoid structure also. Right? So this is the kind of quininoid, not the 100%, but it, it resembles a quininoid form. Right? And here we have a extremely strained three-membered ring. Extremely strained means three-membered ring is having very small space to occupy so that they, they will uh, they will strain a lot so that always having natural tendency to open up. So that's the reason why uh, under photochemical condition you have to open the ring and uh, one more condition required is Compared to the quininoid, benzenoid form is more favorable for any, any kind of cyclic compounds because benzenoid form retaining the aromaticity, aromatic compounds are exceptionally more stable in comparison to the quininoid. Quininoid is also the conjugated one, but aromaticity was not there. But benzenoid form is conjugated and in specific aromatic, so that more kind of stability, more favorable condition we can say. And moreover, three-membered ring is not favorable. It, it want to open up. So both the conditions should be satisfied under these photochemical conditions. This diethyl ether said to be a better solvent in the organic chemistry, diethyl ether, right? 
if you open the lid entire ether will be evaporated being whose uh, boiling point is extremely low empty bottle will left so that we have to preserve very carefully dietyl ether right so here the product is expected to be para ethyl phenol so for ethyl phenol is the product uh, in order to achieve this product how to uh, how to perform the reaction first of all this quinonoid type of molecule subjected to photolytic condition light irradiation light irradiation when performed most of the photochemical reactions are said to be concerted concerted means mechanism it's very difficult to anticipate what mechanism they are following because uh, under light conditions immediate reactions are possible we can't we can't say this is the path for the reaction in order to achieve the product but anyway we try to make the product by means of the photo uh, homolytic fission of the bond photolytic conditions mostly favorable for homolytic fission of the bond homolytic fission stands for any bond which is breaking equally by sharing electrons equally like this odd electron containing free radicals will be originated under photolytic fission conditions all the bonds in this molecule will be fragmented in such a way where equal fragmentation homolytic fission giving odd electron containing species let me show homolytic fission of this carbon oxygen bond so that oxygen acquiring odd electron carbon is also let me fragment this double bond as well so that these two carbons also getting odd electrons and let me break the uh, this uh, three membered ring system so that here one odd electron here one odd electron everybody about five bonds are most labile most uh, somewhat easily broken they are susceptible to break easily that's why we can cleave them and moreover three membered ring is also strained already so that we can break this as well so these many bonds are preferable to broken so that these many odd electrons i generated after generating let me put all electrons in such a manner we have to we have to move into the aromatic form and we have to move into the least strained and moreover highly stable conformation in order to get that let me bind these two electrons so that new pi bond and these two electrons got bonded and in either pi bond if you observe the entire conjugation and this is a aromatic pure benzenoid structure initially quinonoid turned into benzenoid form and the terminal oxygen terminal carbon is having odd electrons per the Uh, in order to make it uh, a stable form, this should be added with more hydrogen atom. Whenever hydrogen added, they will be turned into OH and CH two CH three. This is called para ethyl phenol. This is the way we can achieve the product four over here. So by this, question number five is answered as a option number four. Move on to last question of the session. This is again the. Question given from organic chemistry, and we can say uh, this is the part of uh, pericyclic reactions: thermal rotation, this rotation, thermal condition, photochemical condition. Everything is coming in a uh, what uh, this uh, this kind of photochemistry and pericyclic compounds. Pericyclic compounds are somewhat logical. Uh, the type of bonding, the type of arrangement, the type of shifting requires more focus. Intensified observation will give the product. okay so again it is uh, the kind of organic chemistry part only we are taking a system where we are having cyclohexene moieties both are combined by the ketone right so cyclohexyl ketone dicyclohexyl ketone we say right dicyclohexyl ketone this dicyclohexyl ketone is having conjugation if you observe this double bond can be delocalized this double bond is delocalized this double bond so that entire system is in conjugation right it will be treated with the phosphoric acid h3po4 is called ortho phosphoric acid this is a reagent added and here another one is acoh acetic acid is the solvent for the reaction in order to accomplish we need such medium that medium is a acetic acid uh, we need to dissolve in this okay Uh, in in this acetic acid medium under acid catalyzed conditions the reaction will be facilitated to give a tricyclic compound so this is the kind of uh, this is a kind of cyclo addition we can say and moreover this carbonylic moiety is not participating this is not participating 
So uh, the expected answer is thermal condition and said to be con rotatory. How can we answer this one? In order to answer this, first of all, we have to know what is con rotation, what is dislocation, what is thermal condition, what is photolytic condition, right? Here, con rotatory, dis rotatory means con rotatory is nothing but if you are rotating the bond, if you are moving the bond only in clockwise manner, or else two bonds are rotated in anti clockwise ma manner. So let me repeat once again. Con rotation is nothing but two bonds are rotating either in clockwise or two bonds are rotating in anti clockwise. That is said to be. Uh, con rotatory. Con rotatory is not per always uh, clockwise rotation. So if two bonds, if two bonds are rotating clockwise, that is con rotatory. If two bonds are rotating anti-clockwise, that is also con rotatory. But dis rotatory is one of the bond is in the clockwise, another bond is in anti-clockwise. So that is a kind of opposite orientation, opposite rotation you are observing. That is said to be disrotatory. The condition for con rotatory, this rotatory will be. So, if thermal condition stands for if you are supplying external heat. A photochemical condition means if you are irradiating with the light. Uh, let me repeat once again. Thermal means you are rising the temperature by applying the heat. If you are irradiating the compound under light condition, that is called photochemical photochemical condition. If foreign electrons present, uh, that thermal condition gives rise to con rotation. Foreign plus two by electron system is there, that thermal condition gives rise to dis rotatory. In this compound, in this compound, this double bond O is not participating because it is foreign plus two, rather it is foreign electron system. Thermal con rotation is preferable over there. And one more, our uh, Thermal rotation. Under thermal condition, even number of pi bonds, if present, con rotation is preferable. If you observe, uh, number of pi bonds present are even in nature. Even means, so here, this is a one pi bond participating, this is one pi bond participating. So that 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 is the even, even number of pi bonds present. So that thermal condition and con rotator is preferable. So, uh, in order to give the clear observation, con and this rotation is given. This is moving in clock, clockwise. This is moving in clockwise. This is moving in anti-clockwise, which is called a dislocatory. This is moving in clockwise. This is also moving in clockwise. Both are in the same direction, which is called a con rotatory. This is for purely how this rotation, con rotation is carried. Now, in our molecule, how the cyclization is carried in order to get that. This is the way a compound was taken and added with the catalyst, phosphoric acid. Acetic acid is said to be a, a solvent medium over there. Even number of electrons are located, hence the thermal con rotation is preferable and it will be cyclized in such a manner. You have to uh, bring this bond towards this side. This is uh, moving towards this side so that cyclization is carried. A tricyclic ring system is provided and this delocalized towards this side so that here the new double bond is oriented. So mechanism is depicted for this and the conditions for the transformation is also mentioned thermal conditions and con rotation is preferable. For question number six, option number one is the correct answer. By this, we successfully completed the entire session covering uh, different dimensions of chemistry where IUPAC nomenclature, geometrical isomerism, volumetric analysis, quantitative analysis part, um, organic chemistry mechanism, reagents, how the reaction get carried, these many things came into the picture. And the session is really informative. Those who are aspiring and definitely will increase their interest in order to learn about more uh, concepts in the chemistry. And um, I'm sincerely requesting to like the channel, comment which is interesting and important for your preparation and share with aspirants who are serious about the examination, who really want to crack the exams and subscribe the channel in order to receive more such kind of updates. And thank you very much for your patient listening.